Ready? So you need to rub your wings together for me, okay? You're going to help this little cricket. So that will be your job, helping him rub his wings together. Okay. These pages are sticky. One warm day, from a teeny tiny little egg, a little cricket was born. Welcome, chirped a big cricket, rubbing his wings together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good morning, whizzed a locust spinning through the air. The little cricket <coughs> wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Hello, whispered a praying mantis, scraping his huge front legs together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Good day, crunched a worm, munching its way out of an apple. Yeah. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Hi, bubbled a spittlebug slurping in a sea of froth. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good afternoon, screeched a cicada clinging to a branch of a tree. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. How are you, hummed a bumblebee, flying from flower to flower. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. This poor cricket. Good evening, word a dragonfly, gliding above the water. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good night, buzz the mosquitoes dancing among the stars. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. And then a luna moth sailed quietly through the night, and the cricket enjoyed the stillness. As the luna moth disappeared silently into the distance, the cricket saw another cricket, and she too was a very quiet cricket. Then he rubbed his wings together really hard one more time, really, really hard. And this time, he sang the most beautiful sound he had ever heard. Okay, the terrible plot. Maybe it's a scary book. Six little rabbits down by the lake, munching on carrots and mm, chocolate cake. Mm -hmm. Next to the lake, in a tree up high, a round red apple swings from the sky. Soft is the wind, and the tree bends low. The little red apple is all aglow. And suddenly comes a terrible plop. Uh-oh. Up jump the rabbits. Hop, hop, hop. They shout to each other, run, don't stop. We must get away from this terrible plop. Wait, 
sweet little rabbits, calls the fox as they pass. Where are you hopping to so very fast? But the rabbits cry back, we cannot stop. We must get away from the terrible plop. The terrible plop, thinks the fox in fear. Maybe I'd better get out of here. Goodbye, friendly monkey. I cannot stop. I must get away from the terrible plop. He runs with the rabbits, the monkey and the cat, the pig and the elephant, the tiger and the bat. They're all running. Soon all the animals, one by one, out of the forest they come at a run. Out comes the leopard, out comes the goose, out comes the antelope, out comes the moose. They do not stay, they do not stop. They run, run, run from the terrible yeah. At last they come to the big brown bear, sunning himself in the folding chair. What's this, says the big brown bear with a frown. Where are you going? Stop. Slow down. No, no, brown bear, we must, we cannot stop. We must get away from the terrible plop. The terrible plop? What do I care about a silly old plop, yawns the big brown bear. What do I care? Oh, no, brown bear, they cry, you're wrong. The plop is fierce. The plop is strong. It's coming to get us. It's coming, you'll see. What, growls the brown bear, stronger than me? What do you think? <laughs> and he grabs with his paw at the one coming last, the littlest rabbit who's not very fast, the littlest rabbit with the littlest hop, but the greatest fear of that terrible plop. Now, little rabbit, you show me where is the place of the plop, snarls the big brown bear. Oh, please, big bear, don't make me go. I'm very afraid of the plop, you know. Afraid of the plop? You show me where or I'll eat you up. Poor little rabbit, blink, 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 poor little rabbit, think, think, think. I'm afraid of the plop, I'm afraid of the bear, but the bear is here and the plop is there. Brave little rabbit, hop, 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 back to the lake and the terrible plop. The big brown bear slowly comes to a stop. So where, says the bear, is this terrible plop? The sun is soft, the water is still. An evening wind rolls down the hill. Tall and dark stands the big brown bear, dark and strong with his nose in the air. Next to the lake, in a tree up high, a round red apple swings from the sky. Suddenly comes a terrible plop. But this time, the rabbit does not hop. The wind rolls down from the top of the hill, but this time the littlest rabbit sits still and he turns to speak to the big brown bear. But the big brown bear is not there. The, look at him. The rabbit calls out to the big brown bear, where are you going? Bear, oh where? The bear cries back, I cannot stop. Quick, it's coming. The terrible plop. He thought he was so brave, and that's the end. Bear is running away from the terrible plot.
You guys are Ernest the Moose who doesn't fit. That's too bad for Ernest that he doesn't fit. We'll make him fit though, right? Let's see. Ernest is a rather large moose. He is so large that he can't fit inside this book. Luckily, Ernest is also a very determined moose. He's not going to give up easily. Look at how big he is. We can't even see the top of him. He struggles to shimmy, shift, and shuffle forward. Can't get in. He tries to squidge, squatch, and squeeze in backwards. We see the back of him, right? Yeah. Ernest's middle fits in easily. But what about the rest of them? Ernest is very, very <coughs> disappointed. This book is just too small for him. Or is it? Ernest's little friend has a big idea. She fetches some masking tape. And Ernest collects some paper. Together they carefully crinkle and crumple and stick. And they are busy for a very, very, very long time. Finally, they are finished. Ernest may be a rather large moose, but now he has a rather large book. And he fits in it perfectly. Good job? Yeah. Now we finally see how really big he is, huh? And he is one big moose. All right? Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived at the edge of a great, big, deep, dark forest. And every day, the li a little girl's mother would say to her, little girl, don't you go into the woods, because if you do, the gunny wolf will get you. And the little girl promised, I will never go into the woods. Well, one day, the little girl's mom went ahead to go into town, and she said, she reminded the little girl, and she said, little girl, don't go in the woods, because if you do, the gunny wolf will get you. And she said, no, I won't go in. And her mom left and went into town. As soon as the mom left, the little girl looked into the woods and she said, oh, I see some beautiful white flowers. My mother would love those flowers. I'm just going to pick a few right at the edge of the woods. And so... She walked over to the edge of the woods and she picked some flowers and she sang her pretty song. And she sang, Come qua ki wa, come qua ki wa, come qua ki wa. And then the little girl looked even further into the forest <gasps> and she saw some beautiful red flowers. Do you think her mom would like red flowers too? Yeah. So she walked a little further into the forest and she picked some more flowers. And as she did, she sang, Come qua ki wa, come qua ki wa. And then she looked even further into the woods and she saw some beautiful, beautiful purple flowers. You think her mom would like some purple? Yeah, but she's gonna, and she's gonna be mm -hmm. eaten by a big well, she walked even deeper into the woods and she got some beautiful purple flowers. And as she picked those flowers, it's okay. As she picked those flowers, she sang, Come qua ki wa, come qua ki wa. When all of a sudden, up rose the gunny wolf. And he said, Little girl, why for you move? And she said, I no move. And he said, well, sing me that pretty song. I love it. And so she sang. Come qua ki wa, come qua ki wa. And the gunny wolf, he fell asleep. And the little girl, she ran away.
run, pit a pat, 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 pit a pat. And the gunny wolf, he woke up and he wanted to hear that song and he ran after the little girl. Unga cha, unga cha, unga cha, unga cha. And he said, little girl, why for you moo? And she said, I no moo. And he said, well, then you sing me that pretty song. And so she did. Come qua ki wa, come qua ki wa. And the gunny wolf, he fell asleep. And the little girl, she ran away. Pit a pat, pit a pat, pit a pat, pit a pat, pit a pat. And the gunny wolf woke up and he came after. Unga ja, unga ja, unga ja, unga ja. And the little girl, she ran. Pit a pat, pit a pat, pit a pat, pit a pat, pit a pat. All the way home until she got out of the woods and she never ever went into the woods again because if she does what will happen the gunny wolf will get her and see all he wanted was to hear her pretty song so he wasn't so scary after all was he no not at all okay now that was story number oh and there's the gunny wolf does he look scary nah I don't think he does and there's the little girl. Yep, and she's picking the flowers. There she is, and he's watching her. But he loves her song so much that he wants to be with her. Yeah. Well, see, there she is. She's happily picking her flowers. And there he is. See how he's happy too, because he loves that song. Come Kwakiwa. Can you sing it one more time? It is a very pretty song. And that's the end. Okay. Once there was a boy named Danny. And one day, Danny's mother had a birthday. Danny said to himself, Hmm, what shall I give my mother for her birthday? So Danny started out to see what he could find. He walked along and he met a hen. Good morning, Mrs. Hen, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Cluck, cluck, said the hen. I can give you a nice fresh egg for your mother's birthday. Oh, thank you, said Danny, but she has an egg. Let's see what we can find then, said the hen. So Danny and the hen skipped along until they met a goose. Good morning, Mrs. Goose, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Honk, honk, said the goose. I can give you some nice feathers to make a fine pillow for your mother's birthday. Oh, thank you, said Danny, but she already has a pillow. Let's see what we can find then, said the goose. So Danny and the hen and the goose all hopped along until they met a goat. Good morning, Mrs. Goat, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Ma, ma, said the goat. I can give you some milk for making cheese. Oh, thank you, said Danny, but... My mother already has some cheese. Let's see what we can find then, said the goat. So Danny and the hen and the goose and the goat all galloped along until they met a sheep. Good morning, Mrs. Sheep, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Ba, ba, said the sheep. I can give you some wool to make a warm blanket for your mother's birthday. Oh, thank you, said Danny, but she already has a blanket. And Sheep said, well, let, let's see what we can find then. So Danny and the hen and the goose and the goat and the sheep all trotted along until they met a cow. Good morning, Mrs. Cow, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? Moo, moo, said the cow. I can give you some milk and cream. Oh, thank you, said Danny. 
but she has some milk and cream. Then ask Mr. Bear, said the cow. He lives in the woods over the hill. All right, said Danny. Let's go and ask Mr. Bear. No, said Hen. No, said the goose. Mm, uh-uh, said the goat. No, said the sheep. No, no, said the cow. Not me. So Danny went alone to find Mr. Bear. He ran and ran until he came to the hill. And then he walked and walked and walked until he came to the woods. And there he met Mr. Bear. Good morning, Mr. Bear, said Danny. Can you give me something for my mother's birthday? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I have nothing to give you for your mother's birthday, but I can tell you something to give to her. So Mr. Bear, he whispered a secret into Danny's ear. Oh, said Danny, thank you, Mr. Bear, thank you. Then he ran through the woods, and he skipped down the hill, and he came to his house. Guess what I have for your birthday, Danny said to his mother. So his mother tried to guess. Is it an egg? No, not an egg. Is it a pillow? No. You sure? No. Nope, it's not a pillow. Is it a cheese? No. Nope, not a cheese, said Danny. Is it a blanket? No. No blanket, nope. Is it milk or cream? No. Nope, it isn't milk or cream, said Danny. His mother could not guess at all. So, Danny gave his mother a big birthday bear hug. And that's the best present of all, don't you think? Yeah. I bet your mom would like We're going to find him one. Ready? And it's called a pocket for corduroy. I love corduroy. Late one summer afternoon, Lisa and her mother took their laundry to the laundromat. As always on such trips, Lisa carried along her toy bear, corduroy. Now everybody knows what corduroy looks like, right? The laundromat was a very busy place at this hour. Now corduroy, see how she put him on the chair? You sit right here and wait for me, Lisa said. I'm going to help with the wash. Corduroy waited patiently, and then he suddenly perked up his ears. Lisa's mother was saying, be sure to take everything out of your pockets, Lisa dear. You don't want your precious things to get all wet and soapy. Pockets? Pockets, said Corduroy to himself. I don't have a pocket. He slid off the chair. I must go find something to make a pocket out of, he said. And he began to look around the laundromat. First he came to a pile of fancy towels and washcloths. But nothing was the right size or the right color. Then he saw a huge sack of colorful clothes in a laundry bag. There ought to be something in here to make a pocket out of, he said. Without hesitating, he climbed inside the bag, which was filled with pieces of wet laundry. The dampness didn't bother Corduroy in the least. Oh, this must be a cave. I always wanted to be inside a cave. When the time came for Lisa to fetch her bear, Corduroy was gone. Oh, Mommy, she exclaimed, Corduroy isn't here where I left him. I'm sorry, honey, said her mom, but the laundromat will be closing and we must be getting home. Uh-oh. Lisa didn't want to leave without Corduroy, but her mother insisted. You can come back tomorrow, she said. I'm sure Corduroy will still be here. As they left, a young man wearing an artist's beret was taking his wet laundry out of a bag. 
the very before he knew it, corduroy was being tossed together with all of the sheets, shirts, shorts, and pants. Right inside the dryer. But just as the artist was shutting the glass door, corduroy tumbled out onto the floor. How in thunder did that bear ever get mixed up with all my things, that artist worried. Poor corduroy was damp all over. The least I can do for him is give his overalls a good drying, said the man. He unbuttoned corduroy's shoulder straps and he put his overalls in the dryer. Corduroy grew dizzy as he watched the clothes spinning and spinning and spinning around. But the artist became inspired. This would make a wonderful painting, he said, as he took out a sketch pad out of his pocket and began drawing the swirling colors. I can hardly wait to get back to my studio, the artist said. Finally, the dryer stopped whirling and the man gathered up his clothes. Then he helped Corduroy put his, on his warm, dry overalls. All at once, the manager of the laundromat called, Closing time. Everybody out. Corduroy was gently placed on top of a washing machine. I wonder who that bear belongs to, said the artist as he was leaving. Seems to me he should have his name someplace. He's too fine a fellow to be lost. As soon as the lights were turned off, Corduroy began to his search again. He was surprised to see something white glowing in the dark. Maybe it's snow, he said excitedly. I've always wanted to play in the snow. He accidentally tipped over the open lidded box and suddenly he was covered with soft, slippery soap flakes. <laughs> Gradually, Corduroy began to slip and slide. Oh, what fun, he said with a smile. I've always wanted to ski down a steep mountain. He landed paws first in the empty laundry basket. This must be a cage, he said, peeking through the bars. I never wanted to live inside a cage like a bear in the zoo. By now, Corduroy felt very drowsy, and soon he nodded off to sleep. Next morning, when the manager came to open the door of the laundromat, there was Lisa waiting. Yay. I left something here yesterday, she explained. May I look around? Certainly, said the manager. My customers are always leaving things. Lisa was searching under the chairs and in the back of the washing machines when she heard the manager call her. Is this what you're looking for, senorita? Yes, yes, my best friend, shouted Lisa as she came running. She reached in and she picked Corduroy out of the basket. So this is where you've been, you little rascal, she said. It's time I took you home. Lisa thanked the manager and ran out the door and down the street, holding Corduroy tightly in her arms. I thought I told you to wait for me, she said. Why did you wander away? I went looking for a pocket, Corduroy said. Oh, Corduroy, why didn't you tell me you wanted a pocket, asked Lisa, giving him an affectionate squeeze. That very morning, Lisa sewed a pocket on Corduroy's overalls. Do you see it? And here is a card I've made for you with your name on it to keep it tucked inside. I've always wanted a purple pocket with my name tucked inside, said Corduroy as he and Lisa nuzzled noses, and that's the end.